Fallon, what a whirlwind week. We can see here all the newspapers, back pages, middle pages, even the front page of the Daily Star there. Um, I just want to take your mind back to when you first qualified for this tournament. Um, obviously, you've said in all your interviews that you never really expected all this to happen, but how were you feeling in the build-up to playing in this tournament? Uh, I was very like excited because obviously it's something new and it's something that I've always really wanted to play in. So my like, I thought, oh, well, I'm just going to prepare, see how it goes. I mean, I didn't really know I'd be still in now, but I'm enjoying every minute of it. When did it sort of become real to you that you were in the tournament? Was it when the draw took place and you were drawn out against Ted or was it when you actually got to Alexandra Palace and you had a bit of media attention before the match? Um, I think it was definitely when um, I got to the Alexandra Palace and then it all just sunk in. I was like, wow, I'm going to be on that stage. So I went and watched Michael's game and all that like prior, got used to the atmosphere and I just got so excited then and that's when it all sunk in. Just talk us through your experience on that during that first match, starting from the walk-on, and, and what do you remember from that night? Um, I just remember being so overwhelmed with it all. I mean, I couldn't believe the like how the audience was. I mean, just walking on was incredible. I mean, all the support that I had, and then getting up there and then looking out to the audience, it was amazing. Like, I just can't put into words how I felt because. It was just unbelievable. Like I'd never experienced anything like that in my life. During the match, people have said how you seemed somehow to put all that to the back of your mind and just focus on playing darts. Were you really able to do that or were you kind of panicking and seeing what was happening around you? Did you know how big it was at the time? Uh, no, I definitely didn't know how big it was. I mean, I've always been able to just switch everything off and just focus. So I was just so calm up there and all that. I didn't feel no nerves. I didn't feel no pressure of anything. I just forgot about everything else that had just gone on and just focused on my game. And try, if you can, to put into words how you felt when you hit that winning double against Ted. Uh, it was, like, amazing. Like, I, well, I can't really put into words how it felt. I felt like I'd achieved something. Like, I made history and... It was just an unbelievable feeling. I'm so proud of myself for doing it. And then the day after, of course, that's when all this started. First of all, going on to Good Morning Britain, beating another man at darts in Piers Morgan. Um, a whirlwind 24 hours that was. Just try and talk us through what happened and how you were feeling. Because you said at the time you were probably more nervous doing that than you were playing darts the night before. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've always been more nervous doing interviews anyway. Um, but the day after was absolutely manic. I mean, I was up at five o'clock, go in and do Good Morning Britain, then loads of interviews with BBC, Channel 4, radio interviews, it was just insane. I mean, I never thought I'd be the one like making all the interviews and getting on the papers. I mean, it's incredible. And then the support that came from that, obviously you had a lot of famous people tweeting you, you got verified with your blue tick, we've all seen the video of that as well. Um, and you know all the support that you got from the crowd subsequently in the next match, um, how much did that mean to you to see all these people really supporting you and cheering you on? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've always had like a little bit of support, but I've never had like this much support. And it's incredible. I mean, I love it. I mean, I never thought I'd have this much support. I mean, I'm just, I'm just Fallon. Like, I'm not a world champion or anything like that, but I'm playing like one and I really appreciate all of it. In the first match, there was kind of no expectations, but in the second match, with all this media storm, um, there must have been a little bit of pressure that the eyes of the world were on you. How did you deal with that? Yeah, obviously there was a bit of pressure and stuff like that. But like I said, um, when I'm up there, I've just trained myself mentally just forget to forget that everything that's going on. So I weren't thinking about any of this. Even on the walk-on, I forgot all about it. And I just played my game of darts. And then it was afterwards, it hit me. I was like, wow, this is going to blow up even more now. Yeah, he went 2-0 up in the first set and then all of a sudden this incredible spell of finishing took hold. We had five legs in a row, the 1-3-1 one, one checkout in the middle of it. Uh, how did you just find that focus amongst when he'd started really well at that point but all of a sudden you managed to pile the pressure on him? Yeah, that, that's exactly what it was. I mean, after going 2-0 down, I just thought, just try and get into it. Like, just keep up with scoring, put pressure on him. And then I, like, I feel so comfortable anyway, like confident on my doubles. I mean, that's what I've been practising on. So I knew I could finish, it was just getting down to do it and I just relaxed a bit more and they just went. And for the second match in a row, you went off with back-to-back -back 180s at the start of a leg. 
you've obviously become the first woman to win a match at the William Hill World Championship. Is it a target of yours to be the first to hit a nine data there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm getting closer. I mean, this time I didn't hit a big one. Mm -hmm. So um, I've obviously nearly hit, I've never hit one, um, but I've been so close that I've got to the double. So hopefully on my next game, I can do it again, but this time hit that seventh treble and then hopefully follow it up with the next one in the double. There's a couple of moments that I want to know what was going through your mind. The first when Menzo had the dart to take it to a final set. Um, how did you feel then? And then how did you feel when the bullseye went in to win it? So when Mensa had the, that dart, I instantly thought, OK, Fallon, forget about this. Focus on the next set. I thought he was going in. I, I didn't think he was going to miss. And then when he missed, I just thought, right, <clears throat> play it safe. Go for the big 18s. And then if you get the dart at the ball, just throw straight for it. Like, don't play it safe. Just throw at it. And it went in. And the reaction since, again, everyone has been behind her. It is almost like you've become the kind of people's champion, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's overwhelming. I mean, I'm loving it. I'm in disbelief of it all, really. And it's still trying to sink in. We've seen you once, obviously, come back down to earth after being on top of the world with all this hype and attention. Is that what you need to do now before you play Chris Dobie on Friday? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I just need to forget about all this media attention, come back down to earth, carry on practising how I am, and just take each game as it comes and just enjoy it like I have been. And the big question, obviously, that everyone is asking is, where does it end? How far can you go? Not just in this tournament, but in the, in the future, in your career in darts? Um, I don't know, but that's the exciting thing about it, because I don't know where it's going to go, and I can't wait to see what other things hold. Well, Fallon, thank you very much. You are the Queen of the Palace and we will see you there again on Friday. Thank you. Thank you.